All right, all right. Well, you know it's serious when you got two pastors up at the same time. So, uh, Pastor Dwayne, he wants to uh, share what's going on in his life and how the Lord is leading him. Go for it, bro. All right. Well, um, over the past couple, well, over the past year, uh, my wife and I, we've been praying and uh, really seeking the Lord. And one of the things that we've really felt him confirming lately is that it's time for us to move on in our ministry uh, from Cornerstone. And so we're going to be leaving at the end of the year. Uh, wasn't an easy decision. It was, it was really hard. It's still really hard. It's really hard telling you right now uh, because, you know, you've been so supportive of me and my family and our ministry, and we love you guys so much. Uh, this has been our home for nine years. Uh, it was nine years this week. You want me to hold it up closer to my face, don't you? All right. I just see somebody waving at me in the back. Um, so yeah, uh, we're not leaving just a second. We'll still be around for a little while, but that's where we feel the Lord is, is leading us. Mm. Um, why don't you share with them uh, where you sense the Lord leading you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting. Um, when, when we left California to, to come to Washington, we didn't know where we were going. We, we had a general idea uh, about nine years ago. Uh, we, we felt that the Lord was calling us to, to leave and head to Washington and um, see what he was going to do there. And we started uh, packing up and I had uh, sent Jess and we only had our six month old son, Connor, and they, she went to stay with my family and I packed up the U-Haul and as I was packing up the U-Haul, I think was when the first email or correspondence from Cornerstone came. So um, had no idea, but this feels very similar. Uh, I have no idea where we're going. Uh, we, had, we don't have a plan. There's no church. We're not leaving for another ministry or another job. We just feel like the Lord is telling us it's time. And so we're heading out in faith and saying, okay, Lord, what's next? And sometimes uh, it, it would be easier to wait, to wait until we know the direction uh, but that's, for me, that's not how God has ever worked in my life. Uh, sometimes he wants us to take a leap of faith before he gives us the next step. And that's not just for, for our benefit, that's for Cornerstone's benefit, um, that's for our community. You know, we, yeah. we follow the Lord. And, Amen. you know, the Lord has something amazing in store for Cornerstone, and he has something amazing in store for my, my family. So, Amen. I think it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. He is... He and Jess are not leaving for any uh, reasons like, oh, something happened. There was some sort of moral failure. There, something was going on with the staff. It was none of that. Um, it's just he feels like God is leading them. Well, I, I've been embezzling for years. I just haven't <laughs> found out. <laughs> I figured time to go now. So instead of just him kidding. leaving at the end of the year, he's actually leaving immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh no, I think it's, you know, um, one of those things where he is leaving and we're sad. Um, he's, he's going and he's, um, you know, going, and, but you know, in his going, he doesn't know where he's going, right? And um, even in that, you know, I think, like you said, there's a benefit for us. There's something in this for us because, you know, we've been talking a lot about following the Holy Spirit following the Lord. And gosh darn it, the Lord, the Lord doesn't always tell us where he's leading us. He's kind of like Abraham where he just says, go. Yeah. And then I'm going to show you. That's right. But he wants us to take that step, you know. And so I really appreciate him and Jess and not only for their whole ministry of how they've invested in us as a church family. Um, he started out as uh, overseeing our youth ministry and, you know, from there he's taking on young adults and rock and our equipping ministry. And, um, you know, throughout it all, um, he's just been faithful, faithful in serving the Lord. And even now in his leaving and going, uh, what I hope we glean from that is he's following the Lord. Amen. He's following the Lord. And hopefully we could um, uh, also kind of take that in our own lives. And we would be people who follow the Lord. Uh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Yeah, even with uh, with as hard as this is, and as hard as this is going to be, and as scary as this is in some ways, um, I, I've learned many times over that you only want to be where the Lord wants you. Yeah. And that is the best place to be. And so I would just encourage you in your lives to be always asking the Lord, where do you want me? Yeah. Where? Send me, Lord, I'll go. Whatever it looks like. I, and there's always a tendency to want to have all the answers. And sometimes that's not how the Lord works. Yeah. He wants us to follow him in faith. So. Yeah. Bro, as you go, what do you hope to take with you? Ooh. <laughs> no, I think, um, so of all the things, I think at Cornerstone, and there's so many things that are amazing, um, you know, first of all, just the family atmosphere, the love that we all had for each other and continue to have for each other. And um, it's just amazing, uh, you know, from the day we walked into Cornerstone, the first Sunday where we were incognito and uh, they told us to just come to a service and check it out while we're interviewing you. And uh, yeah, I just still remember immediately being welcomed and, and just feeling connected. And I, I suspect that's how a lot of you felt your first time at Cornerstone. So that's a, that's a big thing. That's a, a something to cherish. Yeah. But the biggest thing that I'm going to take away from Cornerstone is my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I came from a cessationist background. And so when we came to Cornerstone, that was something I knew I needed to grow in. I, was no, I wasn't a cessationist, but I had never experienced much. I had never been taught much. I had never been in a, an environment where we really sought after engaging the Holy Spirit. And so being here and watching and being kind of early on where you guys had already started on that journey, uh, but seeing a church go through the growing pains of what does it look like for a whole church of people to really start to engage with the Holy Spirit and understand his role in their life? Um, that's huge for me. And so, you know, in my heart of hearts, if that's something I can take and help another church discover for the first time and kind of break out of the old stodgy mode of, yeah, we, the Holy Spirit's the third person, but we don't talk about him. He just does his stuff in the back. Um, you know, that would be amazing. So I, I have a heart for that. Mm, amen. Well, I was, I was really glad to hear, too, uh, in my conversations with PD that he plans on continuing on in ministry. Uh, his heart is to minister to people. He shared with me he, he really isn't trained to do anything else. I was going to say, I can't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. He, he knows how to uh, do a lot of construction and stuff like that. Um, he has, he's the jack of all trades, master of many. So... <laughs> The desire for just ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's going to be cool because I know uh, we'll keep in contact and yeah. just be able to hear how the Lord is leading him and how he is blessing him. So, Amen. 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 And just uh, one of the greatest things about the pandemic is it taught us all how to use Zoom. Yeah. And so right. wherever we go, yeah, uh, it's not goodbye. You know, we'll stay in contact. I'll, I'll always be here for every one of you, yeah. uh, no matter where we land. Um, again, I'm not leaving just yet. But also, you know, as Christians, we never say goodbye. It's, it's always, we'll see you soon. Amen. And so. Amen. Well, would you join me as I pray for, for PD? And then, you know, like you say, he's going to be around for a while. And then uh, on their final Sunday with us, we'll pray for PD and Jess and the, the family as well. But today, I just want to pray for, for uh, Dwayne right now. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for uh, PD and all that he's meant to our church family. Thank you for the nine years that you have blessed us. Uh, Lord, so many lives touched, so many lessons learned. Lord, you've used him to open up the scriptures to us. You've used him to help us to understand what community is all about. You've helped us to just grow as followers of Jesus as he has step in, taken steps of faith. Lord, our hearts are uh, a little bit sad, to be honest, that he'll be leaving. But our hearts are excited because not just that he's going, but because he's following. To that, we're very grateful for his example. And we ask that you would go with him and bless him. Bless him and Jess and the boys and Michaela. And Lord, we're just so thankful for this family, how you have just showered us and, and express your grace to us through their lives. So thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
So we know that uh, many of you will want to, you know, just uh, spend time with Dwayne over these next few months, and um, he and Jess, and just want to just put it out there, they're always open to receiving free food, right, bro? <laughs> okay, I think that was a safe call. All right. <laughs>